Well, hello and welcome to today's live coaching call and community conversation. Today is Monday. We're going to be talking about annual blood work and annual physicals as we age and are in this season season of menopause. So welcome. My name is Diane Parham. I am a fasting mindset coach, which basically means I help you with your mindset about making decisions about how it is you want to live your life through menopause. And as a woman who is going through some changes, I am also the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman and the, uh, intermittent fasting course that is starting on January 8th is now open for enrollment. So for those of you who've been asking, our enrollment is open. I would love to have you join us for January, 2022. Okay. So let's get started. I have a little uh, slide presentation that I'm going to have accompany us on our discussion today because there is a lot to cover. And I want you to be able to go back and reference some of these things if you feel like you want a little refresher, or maybe you just had your annual appointment at your physicians and you want to kind of wrap your head around what it is came that came back with your blood work. So um, let's get started there. All the information about the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course is starting in January is in the description box on both Facebook and YouTube, as well as um, on my website, the for today's aging woman.com site. So always feel free to go poke around. Um, I, like I said, in, registration is open and we would love to have you for sure. Okay. So let's talk about um, blood work, right? Well, first I have to always say that I am not a physician. I am an exercise, uh, nutrition coach. I'm a running coach. I have been studying and playing with nutrition for pretty much my, my whole adult life. It started when I became a group fitness instructor in my twenties. Um, but I've always used fitness and nutrition as a means to slim down and manipulate my physique. It hasn't been like probably when I when I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic about seven, six or seven years ago is when I really started changing my focus and my sort of my drive with nutrition and fitness as a means to keep me healthy, right? And I think all of us, when we are younger, 20s, 30s, 40s, it's baby fifties, we, you know, we don't ever really think about the choices that we make in the big scheme of our health. We always are thinking in like maybe the short term of what's going on with our body. And so I hope today will help you think about maybe the long term, letting go of the past. Like I didn't do anything wrong. I was just what I was when I was in my, you know, in my twenties, I was living my best life. I wasn't thinking long range. And now you know, some things have changed for me and I'm thinking a little differently. So I'm hoping that that's where we can kind of meet in the middle here with what we have going on. Okay. So I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving any medical advice. I'm not prescribing anything. I'm just sharing with you guys, my experiences, some things that I've learned and the mindset shifts that I am also making for myself. Okay. So let's go. So cholesterol and menopause, guess what? Another amazing thing about menopause is our cholesterol naturally, because our estrogen is decreasing is going to change. I always talk about here how um, how hormones ebb and flow with one another. You don't necessarily have to make a, even a lifestyle change. You're not doing anything wrong if something comes back and it's suddenly you know in a range that your doctor and you maybe need to start looking at. It's just because you're alive, thank goodness, and experiencing menopause, right? So estrogen is the thing for a lot of us women that is the culprit for a lot of these changes that are going on with us as we are going through menopause. I am not on any kind of hormone replacement therapy, so I. I, my estrogen has completely tanked, um, and that has had a direct result on a lot of things going on in my life. One specifically is my cholesterol. So uh, when estrogen drops, um, we have that shift with our LDL and our HDL. So I want to talk to you guys about a couple other factors that you consider if this is happening happening to you naturally, just because you're going through menopause. So I have also had, so I do, I have always had high cholesterol. So let's just kind of discuss that. Also, I've had naturally high cholesterol. Michael and I eat pretty much the same way we have for the past 20 almost 22 years. He always has lower cholesterol. I always have 
cholesterol on the higher side. I have a family history of high cholesterol. So high cholesterol has always been that thing or higher cholesterol has always been that thing that I've had to just deal with my whole life. It hasn't really affected my life in any way. And the fact that I've changed anything dramatically because of that, I've always just kind of kept an eye on it and I'm just aware of it, right? So I had a heart scan uh, done a few years ago. It's the calcium heart scan. I had zero calcium on my heart. So that's that's a perfect test score. So if you haven't had that done yet, you might want to talk to your doctor or check with your insurance to see if that's available to you. That's a pretty good indicator of what's depositing on your heart. Nothing on my heart is a problem. So that was a, a one of those things that you can also test when you're looking at biomarkers through blood work. Uh, triglycerides for me, independent of cholesterol are super low. Uh, they're 47. They have been as low as 37. Um, and so that's another one of those risk factors, you know, with high cholesterol, if you also have high triglycerides, they all kind of go together. My triglycerides are extremely low. You want to have your triglycerides less than 150. I'm at 47. And then again, like I said, I have a personal history of high cholesterol. So I know that this is going to be one of those things that I'm just going to have to keep an eye on as I'm aging because I've kept an eye on it when I was young also. And so I like to look at these other test results and put the big picture together, right? So there's no calcium deposits on my heart. My triglycerides are low. My, you know, bad cholesterol is on the rise, but my, my good cholesterol is fine, right? It's picture perfect. So we're trying to find the balance between all the test scores. So we don't do anything drastic, right? Trying to like throw darts at things to try to fix something that may not need to be fixed. So here's just another little slide kind of describing cholesterol and what happens during menopause with our cholesterol naturally. You don't have to be doing anything bad. I do all the things that has been that are recommended, you know, for managing cholesterol, and yet I still have high cholesterol. Um, the other thing I want you to think about with cholesterol is, and I talk about this a lot here, especially with intermittent fasting is your dental appointments, right? So I have no plaque problems when it comes to my uh, dental hygiene. And that's one of those other markers with cholesterol as well. If you have a lot of plaque and you have a lot of, um, you know, kind of build up on your teeth, that's also an indicator that there's just plaque going on in your body. I have zero issues with that either. So this is another one of those biomarkers that I look at and go, okay, let's take the whole picture here before we start making any changes in our life and see where the real problem lies. And for me, it's just hormonal, right? So I put a lot, I put um, my, um, my results here in the little bubble at the bottom and then what the recommended, um, you know, uh, targets are for what it is with our cholesterol is. So you guys can, you guys can check that out. Okay. Triglycerides. So I love talking about triglycerides because triglycerides are another one of those things, right? That we really don't think about, um, being something that we have a lot of control over. And I feel like triglycerides for me are always a win when they're super low. I talk a lot here about draining the tanks, right? So <clears throat> With my intermittent fasting, I teach 20 hours of clean fasting. I teach four hours of keto-like feasting, meaning we're going to have a nice balance of high naturally occurring fats, low to moderate protein, very conscious about our carbohydrate intake so we get a balance of all of our macronutrients. And then I also talk about draining the tanks in the sense of when we work out, right? Or when we're moving our body, are we monitoring our heart rate? Are we working out in an efficient window so that we can utilize what we have in storage to pull it out to use it as energy. And this is where I'm really proud of everything that I have going on with my triglycerides, right? Because I don't want to have a fatty liver issue that I have to deal with as I'm starting to age. And so, and, the, and there is non-alcoholic fatty liver, and that's just a buildup of these triglycerides in your liver. So I practice that draining the tanks mentality as a means to make sure that that is not something that I ever have to deal with. So that's something you might want to look into as well. And then use that as a singular test score independent of other things to know that you are doing the things that you need to do to keep your body healthy. So again, 47 was mine. You need to, you really want to have them less than 150. So thyroid and metabolism, a thyroid is another one of those things that just starts to tank on us as we get older, right? And, and for a lot of us, and I talk about this a lot here as well, you guys, um, you know, metabolic flexibility, right? Is your body able to take in energy 
and convert it properly so that you can use that energy as opposed to storing it. And so your thyroid is a big, plays a big role in that. So my thyroid at 56, I've started menopause at 49. So I've been in menopause almost as long as I've been intermittent fasting. Um, and my thyroid is perfect. I do credit that to some dietary changes. We'll go back to this slide in just a second. To some dietary changes that I really focused on when I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic back when I started this journey with intermittent fasting. So I was diagnosed as a pre-diabetic uh, during one of my annual physicals, went back for a second test just to make sure it wasn't a fluke. I was for sure pre-diabetic. I had a very high A1C. Um, and it was just the result of my hormones changing. Again, I wasn't doing anything wrong. I was a practicing health and uh, fitness coach. I was exercising. Ex I was eating clean. But there were some things in my lifestyle or my dietary choices that were causing my body to be more out of balance hormonally as I was shifting through menopause. Three of the big factors, I talk about them a lot here, gluten, soy, and dairy. Gluten is now very directly linked to thyroid conditions, right? And so we want to make sure that if you have some things going on with your thyroid, just run a test. See if you can get gluten out of your diet, go back and, you know, get another test to see what your thyroid function is and see if it has improved. The same thing with soy. Soy was one of those things that was almost crippling for me until I figured out how many places in my life soy was very innocently popping up while I was consciously avoiding soy in my daily choices, right? So soy comes in the form of soy, soy lecithin, soy peyun oil, and it's also referred to as soya in a lot of like skincare products. So keep an eye out for that is another one of those things that's just an allergen and an irritant in our body. You do not have to be deathly allergic to something for it to become a problem for you. It could just be something that's causing causing your hormones to stay out of balance. And then dairy is another one of those things you want to look at. You know, I'm not talking even about glasses of milk with, when it comes to dairy. I'm talking about dairy byproducts. So whey, carrageenan, casein, like a lot of those things in our food as ingredients are causing us to have these shifts and really tweak us and keep us out of balance. So gluten, soy, and dairy are the three things that I ask you to experiment with if you're not happy with some of the things that are going on with your hormonal shifts as you're going through menopause. You do not have to be celiac to be negatively affected by gluten in so many women who are on thyroid medication, um, who haven't made this connection yet, once they make that connection with gluten and soy and dairy and they start getting those irritants out of their body, what we're seeing here in our community, especially with a lot of our graduates from the intermittent fasting course, is they're slowly being taken off of thyroid medication and eventually are medication free. So it's worth the experiment for sure to see if you might be one of those people. So remember, soy um, and dairy, or soy and gluten are the two primary ones that are in a lot of other things in our life other than just food, right? So anything you put in your body, anything you put on your body, or anything you put around your body is what I consider a feast. Your body is consuming those things. So you want to check makeup, you want to check uh, cleaning products, you want to check lotions, you want to check all of those things for gluten and soy because if you're putting them on your body, you're putting them in your body. And then that could also be enough to cause a, a little bit of out of balance feeling for you and your hormones as well. So that's a big factor. I teach that inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course as well. So I do have a cardiologist follow up, which I'm I'm excited about. Let me explain to you why I'm excited about it. At my annual physical, my doctor does do an EKG. It always comes back irregular. It came back irregular two years ago. That was the last time I had a physical was two years ago because of the you know, thing that has been going on in our world. And um, I didn't go to the to the cardiologist just because it was so hard to get an appointment. And so this time I went uh, and had an EKG again. And again, it came back irregular. So we talked about it in her office. There's not, you know, anything that's necessarily wrong with my heart. We've done the calcium test score. You know, I don't have the kind of cholesterol issues that would cause heart disease at this point in my life anyway. And so 
It's probably just because I am a conditioned athlete. I talk about this a lot here about how it is I train. I have a whole course on this called the F3, the trifecta to aging successfully. I have a very low resting heart rate. It gets down into the low 40s and I train myself like an endurance athlete. So I've always had very low blood pressure. I manage stress well. I condition my heart for aerobic conditioning. So all the things I do in my fitness life are for health. They're not for losing weight. They're not necessarily for, you know, changing my body. They are to make sure that I stay very active in my life mobility wise. And I also exercise to make sure that I stay very present in my life heart wise, right? And so because my heart rate is so low, because my blood pressure is so low, um, my doctor has recommended that I go do a stress test just to make sure she'll feel more comfortable because in menopause, we also do have a higher risk of heart disease. So all of these things are things we want to just keep an eye on. So I'm excited about going to see the cardiologist. I call it an ego test for me personally as a runner. I'm sure he's going to put me on that treadmill and run the test and just tell me I have a conditioned heart of an athlete. And that's what I do. I have an I am statement, my midlife mindset. Of course, students know this. I've talked about this here. I made a shift um, a couple of years ago. I am a high, uh, a big believer in positive affirmations and telling ourselves what we believe that we want to be or how we want to show up in our life. And I went from saying I am an athlete to I am a conditioned athlete and putting that conditioned in there changed how I show up in my fitness world. I do a lot of endurance training, 60 minute workouts at a zone two. I do a, a test and see how my fitness is performing on Saturdays when I do a race is what I call it. And I'm doing some strength training. So everything in my fitness world is working, which has sounded the alarms because as a 56 postmenopausal woman, I'm not supposed to have that kind of resting heart rate. I'm not supposed to have that low blood pressure because that's not the norm with our society. So you guys don't be the norm. We want to be those outliers that cause, you know, lights to go off and cause your doctor to be concerned that you're not on medication, that you are managing, you know, a healthy heart and all of those things. And then you can go get a little stress test. To, like I say, boost your ego or whatever it is you want to do. Okay. The other thing that I have, I'm very open about talking about here is I do have osteopenia that was, um, that popped up two years ago in my physical that I had last. It has gotten worse in the last two years, slightly. No, you know, no big shifts. I didn't go from osteopenia to full blown osteoporosis. Again, this is one of those things that I've always had on my radar um, because osteoporosis does run in my family. I have had three pregnancies, which is also one of those things that as beautiful as it is for us women to be able to have a babies and, and, you know, and bring, you know, new uh, people into this world. It also runs a toll on our body. I had a, my first pregnancy at 34. I had a second pregnancy at 38, which resulted in a miscarriage at about 15 weeks. So I was, you know, out of trimester one into trimester two. And then I had a pregnancy and my daughter at 40 when I was on, uh, when I was pregnant, with her, I did um, have to take blood thinners, which is also, it's one of the side effects of blood thinners is um, the risk of osteoporosis as you age. I knew that I accepted the risk because um, there was a belief that the reason I had a miscarriage uh, with my second pregnancy was blood clotting. So I fully accepted the risk. I took the blood thinners and, you know, the result, this could be, you know, the, um, the acceleration into osteoporosis. I'm fine with that. I'm going to just deal with it as it comes. Um, some things I'm doing just to share with you guys uh, to slow down uh, osteoporosis and hopefully, uh, you know, fend off uh, the the full-blown diagnosis of being uh, an osteoporosis menopausal woman is I am taking some supplements, magnesium, calcium, calcium. I take vitamin D with K2, and I'm also uh, taking some collagen. I'm not a big dairy person. Obviously, I explained that in a previous slide, so um, I don't rely on calcium from that form. And calcium has kind of shown to not be the big thing that we need uh, when we have this brittle bone type of situation. Magnesium is also uh, one of the supplements that is highly recommended. I get that in my water. You guys know that. 
I have my water here that has calcium and sodium in it. So I get plenty there. And then I actually do um, extra supplementation. I eat a whole food diet. So I get lots of lo a dark leafy greens. We always have salmon uh, in the rotation of our dinner. Um, and then again, I do use collagen and I have switched out using like just plain old broth anytime I cook to bone broth. So I get the extra collagen support there as well. So here's what we prescribe here in this community. This is what I teach. And this is where I feel like, you know, six years into intermittent fasting now, everything is working the way it's supposed to be working. Um, I fast for 20 hours clean about two to three days a week. The rest of the time I ebb and flow because I'm not battling any sort of health condition, right? Osteoporosis, what I have to go do with my cardiologist has really nothing to do with intermittent fasting specifically other than I'm healthy as a postmenopausal woman. And I believe that it is because of this lifestyle that I've created and I live and I teach with you guys. And it does help me drain the tanks, which is why I'm really confident and happy with my triglyceride levels. I do drink 100 to 150 ounces of mineralized water every day. That's also what I teach. And I live a very authentic keto-like lifestyle. Now, don't think that just because the word keto is in there, that it means ketogenic. Keto for me means a higher naturally occurring fat type of lifestyle with moderate to low amounts of protein and very conscious carbohydrates. I eat anywhere from 100 to 150 probably carbohydrates a day. It all depends on what my day is. And I'm going to go back to a slide and talk to you about the lumen and how I figure out what it is I'm doing with my nutrition there. Um, so you just want to get a lot of healthy whole foods in your diet to help back up what it is you're doing in your fasting window. I say that all the time. We feast so that we can fast. We don't fast so that we can feast. And then training smart is the third component to the trifecta and aging successfully. I do exercise almost every day. I try to focus on my exercise being more endurance. I do weight bearing exercises. I'm a runner. I do a lot of walking. I do some spinning. And do some strength training this year in 2022. I'm going to be focusing on some flexibility and mobility. So I'll be adding that to the mix as well. So you want to make sure that you're factoring in all three things here, the fasting long, the feasting well, and the training smart. Okay. So this is the secret to aging successfully, right? It's consistency over time and what it is you say that you really want for yourself. I consider my physical and everything came back in absolute success. I feel like this lifestyle that I am living is just absolutely proof that it works. I have zero issues with blood sugar levels. Uh, Pre-diabetic state is not even anything that's ever on my radar or a concern of mine. The triglyceride reading that came back is also proof that the pre-diabetic condition that I was, you know, that kicked off this lifestyle change for me, you know, six years ago is actually working and everything is falling into place. So you have the power to change your health. You have the power to be in control of what happens to you as you go through menopause. Um, of course, there are some things like our cholesterol that are just going to change because our hormones are changing as well. That is what menopause is. But if you have your eye on it, Every other thing that is going on in your life, as far as your body and the lifestyle choices you're making are healthy ones, then everything falls into place. And you can then look at the big picture scope of things and not zero in on one thing being so bad that you have to then be under care to manage it. So that's the message that I wanted to share with you guys today. The one thing that I wanted to go back and just kind of touch on really quickly was the lumen. Okay, and the reason I want to touch on this is because if you are concerned about your metabolic flexibility, if you have some things that have come back in your blood work that maybe you're needing to keep an eye on, if you don't know if you're converting the food energy that you put into your body properly because your body is out of balance hormonally, then picking up a device like a Lumen might be a great place for you to start. It also gives some really great nutritional guidelines as well as far as what you should do with your macronutrients. Um, so it's a great place to start if you feel like you're completely lost. Maybe everything in your blood work is coming back as something that your doctor is concerned about and you don't know where to start. The lumen is something, along with even blood glucose and ketone testing, um, they're both things that give you insight on your daily activities and how your body is responding to that. 
Remember, our metabolic flexibility is um, is part of what we do in our nutrition, our fitness, our sleep, our stress, and our hydration, right? So all of those things are going to help you age successfully when you understand for yourself that those choices you're making are affecting your body and what is the outcome of that effect. And now today, thank goodness, we have so many things on, um, you know, in the marketplace that are available to us as just home users that we can use to start tracking and gaining some insight. Uh, so yeah, the Lumen works well. There's a link in my description for it. If you go to the Lumen site, you use my first name, D-Y. Y-A-N-N, you get a $50 discount, which is pretty cool. And then you can just start tracking some things and see how your body is responding on a daily basis. The thing about your physical and annual blood work that I want to also like reinforce is that it is one blood draw on a day that you schedule an appointment, that you go into your doctor's office and whatever was flowing through your blood when that blood was drawn is just what was flowing through your blood when that blood was drawn. If something seems askew, ask if you can go back and get a second test done on a different day and then compare the two numbers. I know Michael had come back uh, from his physical a couple years ago and his blood glucose was like crazy high, which we knew was weird because we do monitor those kind of things. He went back a week later and everything was fine. So always make sure that you can get the second opinion also with some blood work, especially if you're feeling like things are out of place. So six years into intermittent fasting, I feel like outside of what my body chemistry is doing on its own because of the way I was designed as a woman, I feel pretty confident and pretty proud of the way that I'm aging. I do see a lot of things reversing that were problematic for me six years ago. So intermittent fasting is the thing that has helped me balance out my hormones. Remember, you know, we have a lot of hormones in our body and they're all ebbing and flowing. And when the hormones that are the most drastically changing, specifically our estrogen is the one that's going to be influencing what's going on with our insulin and what's happening with our thyroid. And yes, what's happening with our cholesterol, then this lifestyle is the thing that can help you at least get a head start on it and manage what you can manage outside of manipulating what's going on with your estrogen. So I'm pretty excited about it. What I love sharing about this kind of feedback from annual physicals is that um, there's so many warnings out there for us as women with intermittent fasting that we're not supposed to do it and it's extreme and we have all these risks because we're women and it's going to mess up our hormones. It's not true. What I want you to get, what I want you guys to understand is like anything that you do from a sound mindset, anything that you do that is not drastic or extreme is only going to benefit you, right? It's only going to show you signs of improvement and then the, you ebb and flow your way through your life. So don't do anything in extremes. Don't do anything as a panic. Show up every day consistently over time. And as time goes on, things will start to improve and things will start to adjust because that's what your body has been designed to do. So I hope this is helpful for you. I'm super excited. Now I'm going to go into 2022. No health worries, no health concerns. I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing to slow down osteoporosis. I'm going to continue doing uh, what I'm doing with my fitness. Uh, I'll keep you guys posted on, posted on what happens with the cardiologist, but I'm super excited and I want to make sure that you guys feel empowered and excited when you go to your doctor's appointment. I run to my doctor's appointment like take the blood. I want to know what's going on because that's the best feedback you can get along with if you're doing daily testing with your glucose and ketones or you're testing with something like Lumen. I also monitor my sleep so I know uh, that the sleep that I'm getting is also the kind of sleep that I need to make sure that my body stays healthy and fit as well. So let's see who's here today. I'll answer some questions and then we'll get out of here. I know today's uh, presentation was long. I wanted to make sure you guys got the full picture of things. I'm always a willing to be very transparent about what's going on in my body to hopefully help you understand what's going on in your body. And so you can make some choices that you feel empowered about when in fact you go talk to your doctor or your healthcare provider about some things that are going on with you. Michelle, actually catching you live. Hello from Canada. Girlfriend, I love it when you can catch us live. Thanks for commenting. I appreciate you being here. It's super fun to have you. Patsy, good morning. Marie, I've been intermittent fasting since February. Lost approximately 40 pounds, but my cholesterol is really high and the doctor wanted to put me on meds, but I'm um, resisting, uh, resisting to see if fasting will bring it down. I'm 66. Cholesterol was never an issue until recently. Okay. 
so the thing about cholesterol is that it is changing. Like a lot of the, the markers and guidelines for cholesterol are changing. So what I always recommend Marie is go and do outside research, like do some research online yourself, uh, read between the lines on all the research that you're doing for sure. Um, there are some supplements that you can take that will help with, uh, reducing cholesterol as well. Here's, here's my theory on, cause my cholesterol went really high in the beginning too. And it's, it's now kind of settling my cholesterol does this a lot, right? Which is how our body's designed to, to operate. Um, here's how I like think about cholesterol and what I started doing with my intermittent fasting is that I thought of it as when it went high, cause I didn't make really any dietary changes other than I really, I gave up a lot of animal protein. I was, you know, giving up all the things that were intolerant to me. I'm not a big dairy person. So I was eating mostly plants and my cholesterol still went high. And I'm like, how could this be? And I was like, well, what if my body's breaking up cholesterol, right? What if it's breaking it up and it's moving through my bloodstream and being utilized and it's just present because it's being mobile. So that's how I kind of thought about it and just kept on track. I kept making healthy changes uh, to my lifestyle. I kept making informed decisions. Um, and I just know it's one of those things that is high for me. So make some changes. You have to experiment, right? I would experiment with some things before you get for me personally, before I would be put on a prescription, I won't be put on a prescription for cholesterol. There's too many things I could do naturally. And so um, look at the other factors as well. Look at your triglycerides, go get a calcium heart a scan. Um, what are the other things that you could do? Like evaluate what's going on at the dentist as well. If you have a lot of plaque buildup in your mouth, you could, that could be one of the factors as well with your cholesterol. So look at a bunch of things um, and then you know go in and form with your follow-up appointment with your doctor uh, before you get put on any kind of medication that you don't feel comfortable with. There are times we have to just be put on medication if there's no alternative to it, but I would do the work at home first and then see what kind of changes you can incorporate for yourself. Diane, good morning. Rita, hello, girlfriend from Israel. So good to have you with us. Marie, April, 2017. Thank you for sharing your personal information. Um, with us after all these years, I still learn from you every time I listen to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, you know, I am, I am trying to be as transparent as possible because we can be so duped by all the scary things that people are warning us about. And we only think that there's one way. And I never want to be the person that goes to my doctor and just is like, okay, like scared and uninformed and just, you know, put on a prescription because I don't, I don't know any other options. So always make sure you're looking all the biomarkers in your life. Always make sure you're considering your family history. Always make sure you're considering the daily choices that you're making. The, the, the best thing we can do about all of this that we're doing with our care for ourselves is being honest, right? And this is where the mindset work comes in. What do you really want? Like, I really want to age successfully. I really want to keep running. I really want to participate with my kids. I really don't want to be, you know, stuck to a doctor's office and refilling prescriptions and all of those. I don't want to do that. So I have to make informed choices every day about what it is I say I really want and be honest about it. And I think once we get to that point where we're just like, uh-uh, I'm not going down that road and you're really honest about it, that's when really you can really start creating some change for sure. Shonda, November 2021, grad great info love this way of life happy holidays happy holidays to you my friend i hope you're doing well don a uh, glad everything looks good i have the aura ring also i'm having trouble with my sleeping okay so here's the thing with when we get devices and i see this a lot in the lumen community as well when you get devices you have to ask yourself why did i get an aura ring why did i get a lumen why am i blood testing why am i managing these things right and what we have to remember about an aura ring or a lumen or any of those kind of things is that they give us insight, right? And oftentimes the insight is the after fact of the choices that we made. So what I love about the aura ring is the aura ring flat out tells me when I should be in bed, right? It tells me the best time for me to be in at sleep. I know when I get my, my REM sleep during the night. I know when I get my deep sleep during the night because I've been tracking it. So if I don't follow the advice of the device, then my sleep is not as good as it should be. So make sure with any of these devices that you're investing in the Lumen included, that you're using it the way it was designed to use and why it is you bought the thing, right? So 
Um, Don, the sleep thing is amazing. It's absolutely fascinating. I'm super excited. You have the aura ring. Keep me posted on how things are going for sure. Um, it's fat. Our bodies are fascinating, right? It, they, they're telling us things all the time. Um, that's what I call the signs and signals. And we have to just make sure that we're listening correctly, right? So that we can make decisions to get the best results. So I am super excited. Uh, Jill, good morning. I am from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Well, uh, welcome, Jill. Super glad to have you here. Hopefully you, you've subscribed if you're new. Uh, Don, hot flashes are back. Yeah, hot flashes are often, they could be something that you're putting in your feasting window. So keep an eye on that as well. The fasting part of it is never, ever the problem. It's what it is we're doing in our feasting window. Um, and it could be that you're not getting... Um, you know, enough minerals in your, in your body throughout the day either. So mm -hmm. magnesium, potassium, and calcium for sure. Track your water, make sure it's mineralized on, and then see if the hot flashes kind of subside there as well. And, um, and then check your nutrition. Okay. So I hope that excites you about this intermittent fasting lifestyle. I love it. I know for sure if I had not started practicing intermittent fasting when I was diagnosed with my pre-diabetic condition six years ago, and I was gaining all that weight and I was hoarding all that body fat and my brain was starting to slip on me, that I would be in a different position today. I am 100% confident of that. So intermittent fasting is an amazing lifestyle. You have to do it. Uh, with a great healthy mindset. You don't want to do it in extremes. It is not a drastic way to lose quick weight. It doesn't work that way. It is an opportunity to give your body to heal itself from the inside out. And the proof is in the pudding. When you go to your doctor, you get your blood work drawn, or you just start to notice the signs and signals your body is sending are changing for the better. So like I said, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course is open for registration. We start January the 8th. I would love to see you in it. I will not be here on Thursday. We are going to be celebrating family time here at our house, but I will see you next Monday at 9 a.m. And then after that, we're going to our 12 uh, p.m. time for our lives. But I will inform you guys through email, so make sure you're on my email list as well. Have a great week, you guys. Happy holidays. Um, it's a fun week. Hopefully, you're going to be able to be with your people or however it is you celebrate holidays during this season. Um, we are going to hunker down at home and just enjoy um, everybody being back. My son's back from college. My daughter's home from, from high school. It doesn't have anything going on in her life, so we're just going to hunker down, watch lots of movies, enjoy amazing food. We're going to fast long and we're going to feast well and we're going to train smart just like we usually do. I hope you guys have the same opportunity. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys around.